Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the B Ball Jones podcast. Of course, I am B Ball Jones, and of course, that is, I finally got it right on the first try. That is Nelson Hanson. Feel good about that one. You're throwing me off, man. But I finally got it right on the first try. So, right there is Nelson Hanson. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, then you probably have no clue what we're talking about right here. But if you're watching, you, you, you kind of understand what we're talking about. Everybody's kind of messed up on it. That's Nelson Hanson right there, man. What's up, man? I'm good, bro. How you doing? Bro, I was on a nine, but that just bumped me up to a ten, and I finally got it right. So um, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I feel it though. I promise you. Cause like I, I didn't, you know, how many times I just tried to point. Hold on, let me see if I can wait. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Remember all the man. times I said my trophy right there. Yeah. I can't even point that. <laughs> but so I feel it. So yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, everybody's good, man. So we're in a good mood. Let's go ahead and get into today's topic or discussion for today, which is just our thoughts and feelings on the Redeem Team uh, documentary that dropped not too long ago. Um, the Redeem Team is a 2008 men's basketball Olympic team. For those few people who may not know or understand, but if you listen to this podcast, because I'm pretty sure you have a good understanding of that. So, um, so you had enough time to watch it. So I don't want to hear no spoilers, no nothing like that. We, we've given you enough time in my opinion to watch it so uh getting our thoughts reactions whatever about it so you man what, what are your thoughts about it man after watching the documentary man i can't lie dog i loved it like mm. it was a great doc well made like the the build up to the to that team of like you know with the recent the the past few olympic teams and how they they flamed out and stuff Cause I never really thought about it, like you know, I was that was kind of like my younger years, so I wasn't really thinking about it back then. But like 2000, 2004, you know, them them years, like you would think they would just win with the talent they had, but they was not winning. Yeah. And so I never really thought about that. And then you know the Redeem team, and then the the, the story how they put it all together. Cause like man, anytime you think. And I'm sure, like, you and most people would agree, like, anytime you think about, well, the team was LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, uh, Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony, Jason oh. Kidd. I, I ain't even talking about before Kobe even came to the picture. When you oh, name yeah. them guys, most people be like, yeah, Allen Iverson, most people be like, oh, yeah, they, they going to win it all. Mm-hmm. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they did not. And that's the craziest thing. And, you know, it kind of makes you realize – like one of the little underlying lessons, I don't know if y'all picked up on it, but if you didn't go watch it again, one of the little underlying lessons in the Redeem Team doc is basketball, no matter how much talent you got, is still a team game. Because mm-hmm. of course they had the most talent. The NBA is the more is the best of the best in the world. And we know that. And the other countries knew that. And they said it. Like Manu Ginobili said it. Everything other other countries know they like man overall talent they better than us but we play better as a team at the end of the day it's a five like it's five guys out there that's got to play it's not one on one and that I, I bet that hit folks like like mm-hmm. this is still a team game like yeah we got Bron yeah we got Wade yeah we got Melo but if they don't play the right way and play together they still gonna lose so. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a good little thing, a good little a little underlying theme in the in the in the show in the doc. But overall, man, I just think it was really great, man. I think it was a great the whole like story. The story of it all was great. I think it's cool to see how stars came together and you know put they put they I uh, kind of put their pride to the side to play. Like think about how Dwayne Wade was like um Dwayne Wade telling Melo. These two guys of all people, like, hey, we got to come in and give these guys a different look when our big dogs come out. Talking about Bron and Kobe. And it's like, you one of the big dogs, bro. <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to most people, like, Dwayne Wade, like, when these boys come out, we got to come get him a different look. So he, like, Wade, like, in a way, like, the guys really had to put their pride to the side to be, like, to play with the team that they had, you know? And so I think the whole thing was great. I think it's great how Kobe came in 
and was a leader, but he let Braun also lead. Like him and Braun, like was like like leading in, in two different ways, but they both, you know, they still came together and like you know provided what the team needed. And I, I already know you probably gonna get into Kobe and his whole thing, but the whole thing as a whole, bro, just it's a great story, man. I enjoyed it. What about you? Yeah, it was a good doc. Um, I'm, I was a little more privy and aware of certain stuff because I grew up. That was really like the first Olympics I really got to really understand and watch because that was honestly, in my opinion, I think that was one of the best Olympics, like, period. And I'm, I'm still young to be saying that, but you got to think in 2008 Beijing year, that was the redeemed team camp coming back. That was Michael Phelps going stupid. That was like the first of Michael Phelps really dominating, becoming Michael Phelps. Like he, that's when he took off and he was like God level. Like that's when he became goat status, Mount Rushmore level of athlete. And that was Usain Bolt year. So we've seen two individual sport athletes take off and just go stupid. That's when NBA said, "Now we're taking back men's basketball. Let's throw our best out there for real, for real." And we're taking this back. Women's game, they've been killing. So that's just like they, they just. You know, same with the same feeling. But that was the first year that, for me personally, that like we really just like took off and took over. And, um, more specifically about the documentary, I, I it, it gave me similar vibes of uh, this most recent Olympic year team, to where the 04 team was most similar to this year, or not this year, but the most recent year's team of uh, the men's basketball Olympic team. Because it felt like I didn't I didn't understand why the old four team was kind of like so weird like that. It was like a bunch of old guys, the AIs, the Steph Marbury's, Tim Duncan. He had a bunch of young guys. It was literally like maybe 10 year vet, somewhere close to that. And then you had another group of like first year guys, like just off there for Ricky. Yeah, LeBron, Melo, Boozer had like two years in and uh Wade. So like that yeah. gap, and I, I didn't fully understand that and the whys and everything going to it. So that was kind of cool to understand that and like the whole thing about the war and everything. I didn't piece all that together before yeah, watching Dr. Mary. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so I didn't really realize that. I just thought it was just dudes kind of just like, didn't, I don't know. I didn't, I just didn't piece the stuff together. I was like, okay, whatever. I thought it was interesting or something. I didn't know. But uh, that's similar to what this most recent year was between COVID, um, guys being injured, and then just the time of being in there. Like it's just like, I done did two, three, four years of this. I done got me a couple gold rings, I mean, a couple gold medals. It's just like, I'm kind of good on it. So it's like, you kind of scrapping for a minute. This guy was out for injury. This guy, <clears throat> he was out for COVID. Or this group of guys were out because they just wanted to rest up, whatever. So it's like, you kind of scrape, not scraping the bottom of the barrel because you still got all star, you know, talented guys. But it's like, it's not the guys that we used to send out there. We, 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 a little shorthanded on ammunition compared to we used, we ain't coming out with the, the tanks like we used to we still come out yeah. with bazookas you feel me so it's just like bazookas still do some damage but it's de- they're playing like that tank you know so um that's that's just yeah. kind of what <laughs> that's kind of what we came out with and we still won but um it kind of gave me those similar vibes you know first off um i think it, it was it was interesting to see um because i heard stories of guys talking about why the team didn't mesh together and why it didn't fit. And it was kind of more of just like, kind of like how you're saying, yeah, we throw a whole bunch of talent out there and we just expect to throw talent out and we just go dominate and win. But like you said, it's talent's cool. You need the talent, but team chemistry matters just as much, if not more, than how talented you are. Because we had the most talented team. We went out there and got smacked multiple years. So not just Olympic, but FIBA team too. So, uh, you know, just that understanding that, like you were saying, team chemistry means a lot, you know, was a, dope thing to see um but yeah, it was a good documentary overall i still have some i'm gonna save my takes and certain takes for a minute you know a little later but um but yeah i, I now i got more understanding of why the team was kind of a patchwork job for the 04 team and kind of why the 08 team came to be i have a better understanding of that man so that's kind of what i really took away from the first uh you know our first real takeaway with the documentary was just that understanding why we were in a situation and just the vibe going around during that time frame. Cause I didn't really, I was maybe 10 
around 04, somewhere around there. So I'm like, I'm, I don't know what's going on. It's about 08. I'm like 14, 15. I'm starting to catch the groove of basketball for real, for real. So, okay, now I'm in basketball. I understand more. So it was cool, like, finally piece things together and get the, a better full scope of what was happening around that time. But it was a good documentary overall. Thanks. And um, I think it was really, like, I think it was cool to see, like, the coaching perspective of it, too. I enjoyed that also. Like, how they was like, um, Jerry Col- 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 Colangelo. And that was his name? Colangelo, that's how you said. Yeah. And um, they put him in charge of it. And they was like, yeah, everything he touches turns to gold. He's good at, like, revamping things. They, they were talking about how he did the Knicks and, like, um, something else. Science? Yeah, the Suns. He brought the Suns along, or whatever. So like, he's good at like upstarting or restarting things of that nature. And so uh, they put him in charge, and he go get Coach K. Also, didn't know this. Did not know that Coach K was a military guy before he would have mm-hmm. got like full fledged into basketball. Did not know that. Yep. But um, they bring in Coach K to coach the team, and then you know. They, he, you know, K comes in in 2000, I want to say. I think 2000 was his first year coaching the Olympic team. I, and, think, um, I think he was an assistant back with the Dream Team, I want to say. Mm-hmm. But he became the official head coach in 04. No, 08. I'm lying. He came. After they lost in 04, he became, like, the official. Because that's when they cleaned the system and everything. So, like, oh, after 04. I don't know exactly. Okay. Like after 04. That's yeah, so I didn't know that. I thought that was cool to see that side of it. Like, you never really think about the behind the scenes of Olympic basketball. You kind of, I don't know about y'all, but I always kind of just think like it's probably just a group of dudes in the room and they like got a big board of the best NBA players and they're like, all right, obviously, we're gonna call LeBron, we're gonna call D-Way, we're gonna call Melo, whatever. And then they're like, okay, let's see who else we need to put around them. Let's get this guy called, let's get this guy called. That's kind of how I think about it. But no, nah, in reality, them boys was like they were locked in from the beginning, and then they start. I didn't realize that they start working out every summer so they could develop chemistry with each other, mm-hmm. which also explains how guys like LeBron want to team up with D Wade and Bosh. You know how they all team up together. I'm surprised they talk like, about that. Yeah, I guess they try. They probably try to keep it all Olympic basketball rather than just talking so much about the NBA. But um. That explains why stuff like that happens because these boys spent a month, like they said, they spent like a month in Vegas on like just just practicing Olympic basketball and stuff. Like all them guys coming together to work out and practice for a month every summer. And I didn't realize that was going on. So they developing their chemistry like in their off season for four years straight, preparing for four years down the line. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this the team. We might add or lose here and there, depending on what happens. You know, you never know. Somebody might get hurt. Somebody might decide not to play, whatever. But as of right now, this is the team. Mm-hmm. And they took that for four years running and played with them same guys. I think that's real cool, man, like, to just grind it out and practice with guys to develop chemistry for something that ain't in the near future. Like, these boys' enemies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, these mm-hmm. boys play each other every, like, every season. They playing each other. Like, think about it from 2004 to 2008. Wade won a championship. Uh, who else? The Spurs won one. None of the Spurs players was on that dream team. I mean, it was on the redeem team. So, uh, who else? Let me think. Let me think. Uh, in that time, Melo and them played each other. Melo and Kobe played each other in the playoffs. Um you know, these these are some – Chris Paul and Darren Williams was on the team. Wait, my, fault, my bad, my bad. Yeah, Darren Williams, my fault. Chris Paul and mm-hmm. Darren Williams, this this is a time where they was, like, competing for the best point guard in the league spot, technically. And then this is also a time Braun was coming along, and, like, they 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 mentioned that, too. That when they put Kobe on the team, they, like, everybody basically saying, who the best player in the league is it LeBron or is it Kobe? And is that, is that, you know, whatever. That whole dynamic going on. So these are guys that are that are really actually competing every season, and then even that, even as that's going on every summer, they put that to the side and they come together and they practice for like a good month. So I thought that was all real cool to see the behind the scenes of everything. Like, how did this really come together? Are these just guys we threw together and they practiced for a couple of weeks and then they went and played, or like because that's kind of I feel like that's kind of what I was thinking. 
in the past, you know, when I was younger, like, this probably just some guys they threw together. They practiced probably about like a month, a month before it started, a month and a half. And then they took off to Beijing and won. But no, nah, this was four years in the making. Like, y'all, they was like, y'all got to commit to this. Like, every summer, we here, we grinding it out, developing chemistry, learning how to play international basketball because the rules are different and things like that. I thought, like, all that stuff, man. I loved all that. It's cool to just see, like, how it all came together. Yeah, I think the behind the scenes is interesting, too, just because, um, like, they, they thought in 04, you know, we had to figure – no, they thought in 06 we kind of had to figure it out because that was the FIBA year. They were mm-hmm. like, okay, we kind of got to figure it out. We're going to start here and just get the role going, whatever. We're ready. Like LeBron said, they went out again and lost again to – who was it? Because it was a college royal team. Puerto Rico. They lost to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And they was like, no, nah, we still ain't ready because we ain't got – this and this and that's the D-Way was like when we getting killed by the high pick and roll that's how we was doing in NBA so I'll be getting killed by the high pick and roll that's what we do so it's like obviously we're not ready yet so uh, but it was just kind of cool to like really see like the I'm, I'm kind of I'm not like a I'm kind of a nerd for that so like the behind the scenes stuff I, I kind of like the like the the strategy and, and game plan behind all that um, so it was just interesting to see how Colangelo really thought about it because he was like like the the biggest gap still to this day is the fact that these guys are growing up together, you know, sixteen u seventeen u like these dudes like yeah, that's why sometimes uh like Pau Gasol when he didn't get an NBA contract he just went back overseas and went back to hoop for his country team because there's nothing for him like he's hey I'm, y'all y'all got a spot for him bro you Pau Gasol come on bro like what you talking about bro you know you good like. <laughs> who you who you want to cut off, bro? We let you get, get you got that type of pool. Like who you want to cut off? Bro? We got you, bro. like like it's Dirk. You hooping, bro? All right, we got a spot for you, bro. Like you good? Like it's nothing. So that type of chemistry, you understand they have for the home team. I'm pretty sure the same thing for having if it was vice versa to where uh, if we're in the same similar situation to where LeBron. Let me get it. Like uh, Joel and B is a perfect example because they're talking about him picking up a team USA. So let's say uh, and B wanted to play overseas or something. And then we love him so much back over here. We just like, and B pick up the phone. Yeah, you got a spot for me, bro? What? We will cut such and such in a heartbeat, bro. Come on, Joel. Like we got you. Like it's that simple. So it's just interesting to see, like you said, like you said, the the game plan behind it and how they really broke down. Because we like what's killing us isn't talent. We had the most talented players, but the chemistry and them guys being adjusted to the rules and the game, the feel of the game, all that stuff is different. So. Um, them doing through going through all that was interesting to see too. Um, one thing I, I I'm gonna go ahead and kind of say I didn't like for me personally, maybe it's just me being biased, um, mm. of being like the nerd that I am. I would like to have heard from Michael Red. I would like to have heard from uh, Tayshawn Prince a little more. Like I think it was mainly revolved around but the Banana Boat Crew, sprinkling some Dwight and Carlos Boozer. Like I would I would love to have heard from the other guys around it and not just the primary guy maybe it's just they didn't have access maybe they pick up they didn't pick up the phone whatever but i would have loved to have heard from all 12 guys uh, I feel as much that, as possible. you know because it's cool to hear how d wade brun kobe Miller. it's cool like cp that's cool but sometimes it's just a different perspective that you get from like a role guy like what did tayshaun prince really have to say about that like man they call me like who like you didn't call him, like you called me over him. This is the right number. Like, you're playing. Right? I love to like hear that side of it too. Because sometimes we get too caught up in like that guy. And it's I'm not trying to knock in them guy. You know, I'm, I'm a D Wade fan, Kobe fan. I'm, not, I'm a CP guy. I love them guys. But it's just a different perspective of seeing the sidekicks and like I don't want to only hear Batman story. Sometimes I throw it to Robin too. Throw him a little lob. You feel me? Like give me a little something over here too. But I would love to have heard their perspective on that. Uh, and I kind of wish they went and went just a little bit deeper into um, certain stories or stuff. I can't think about it right now, but like, I wish they went like a level deeper. They're just one level deeper of like, why Coach K? Who else was on the board besides Coach K? Like, he was an interesting pick, but why you pick a college guy for these pro guys? Because that was an interesting thought. I don't, They didn't really go into that for real, for real. Because he had a military background, was the only reason they really gave. And Dean Smith said, 
you know, he co-signed him. I'm like, why not Pop? He's in the NBA. Pat Riley. I already won championships. He's already won championships. He, he's established. Pat <laughs> Riley is one of those guys. Uh, now it's, it's more not, not trying to not coach. I don't want to understand more of why and who else was on the board consideration of like, you know what I mean? So it's an interesting thought to have. It's just like, why didn't they go into that one? Like, you know, so um, obviously it turned out well, so you can't complain too much at all. But it is an interesting thought of like, well, why Coach K? Why are you picking a college guy to come up to a pro level? Not even pro level for real. Olympic level. You skipping uh, skill level. pro international. <laughs> Forget that, brother. Let's go. Let's go take the pro guys and just root them up and put them on international. So you're going to cross seas. Like what? So that's an interesting to see, man. So I just kind of wish they would have like went a little bit deeper into certain stuff like that. Got more of the role guys' thoughts on it. Maybe they didn't pick up the phone, but I don't know. And I wish it would have got deeper into Coach Kane why they picked him and um, more of the understanding of who else was in contention. For that position, but that's just maybe that's just nitpicking basketball nerd to me. But that's kind of one of the few things I wish they kind of would have picked up on some. I feel that though. I kind of wish they had to dove deeper into um the young Bron, young Melo, and them young deal. <laughs> I can't lie, the young the young version of them makes me laugh. You know, oh, yeah. like just like the young version of them. Like I don't know what it is, but they are funny to me, and I remember. <laughs> I was talking to my teammate about this the other day. Because, you know, they were talking about how they got Bron, Melo, and Wade and them to come in. They was young bucks in 2004. They just got drafted in 2003. So they just got out their rookie season. And now they playing in the Olympics. <laughs> and uh, they weren't playing. Like, they wasn't getting in. And you kind of not think about Bron and Melo and them guys not playing. You never really think about that. But them boys was not playing. And they lost. They got the bronze medal. <laughs> they had that clip of Melo. They like Carmelo. What happened out there? And Melo like, shoot, I don't know. I went out there. Yep. <laughs> I went out there. I said, dang, Melo, that was not the right answer. <laughs> nope, but he didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care, but that's that young, that's that young mind deal. Because I know plenty of the guys around that played with in college and stuff would have said some stuff like that. Man, what mm-hmm. happened? Shoot, I don't know. I was out there. I went out there. I was watching just like y'all. <laughs> that's the kind of attitude he had. And I'm like, dang, boy, you really was like 19, 20. Yep. <laughs> he had the baby face and everything. You could tell yep. he said, young. <laughs> yeah. Man, that joke makes me laugh. And then they were talking about all that, the, that side for Braun. And Braun was like, I remember. After that, man, I remember thinking, like, man, this was a waste of my time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy to me. I love stuff like that. Like, dang, bro, you was a, you was a young buck at one time. Like, you know, I and you know when he was he was in Cleveland, he was a star. I was a mellow star in Denver in their rookie year. Same thing for Wade. But um, he just uh, you just never think about like guys like that being in any place where they not playing. And them boys were not seeing no playing time for real. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, that's crazy. And then uh, another thing that I like was like um, when they was talking about Kobe, when they finally got Kobe to come in, mm-hmm. it was like, this is big for Kobe because it was like Kobe was going through like a time right there. Like he was yeah. like, everybody, like folks in the league got this bad image of him. And it was like, a th- like it was like the stigma around him was that he was selfish. He pushed Shaq away, all that good stuff, you know. He uh, was a, a one-man show, doesn't want to share, doesn't play well with others. So he had that kind of stigma around him. And, you know, they talked about how he demanded the trade from the Lakers at one point that a lot of people don't really talk about, don't really bring up. Like, at one point in time, he was, thinking, he was trying to get away from the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And so – Oh, uh, it was uh, it really was like something that I, I enjoyed to see that too. Like Kobe Bryant was like frustrated with the Lakers. He was like looking for a fresh start and wanted to go somewhere else. And uh they the Olympic uh, you know you don't think about it like that, but the Olympic uh team gave him a way to like show that he could play with a, a team, like he could play with other guys. And so um they bring him in and uh, like help us help you type stuff. Like you come play for us, you know, of course we use your talent, all that, and your leadership more than anything. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, 
this will give you an opportunity to show people that you can play with other stars. You can play with another guy. You can play with a LeBron. You can play with a Melo. You can play with a D-Wade, you know? And, like, you're not a selfish player. You're not a selfish guy. You're not a one-man show. And so I never realized all of that background information when it actually was going on. But it's cool to see that, though. And Kobe proved it. He, like, Kobe comes in. He himself, like he, like they talking about, he standoffish. He don't really kick it with nobody. He don't really fool with the guys, you know. But him leading by example still like drew people toward him, and like, you know, you know, we probably get, we get into that too, uh, how the guys kind of conform to Kobe's schedule, and like start work doing putting in the work that he was putting in, and so I thought all of that was cool. I never thought about no stuff like that, like. Like the Olympic team really probably was big for Kobe in a way, bigger for him, big just as big for him as it was for the guys playing with him. And so I enjoyed all that, man. It's cool to see that side of Kobe, like, because you never really think about Kobe. Like, they said Kobe don't have no friends, <laughs> they even said it. And so it's cool to see, like, I feel like that Olympic team probably made him soften up a little bit, like, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like. I can I can kick it with these guys and still put the work in. I can I can be with these guys and like even though I might not be the number one player every day or every night out that we play, I I, he, I feel like he probably learned something in that in that experience as well. So I thought that was real cool to see. Yeah, the, like the whole dynamic of Kobe. Because once again, I'm I knew this stuff, but I didn't always piece things together. You know what right. I mean? Like it's just like. Yeah, Kobe had his issues from like 06 till 08. Like, that's just kind of like, okay, cool. But I didn't piece it together with the whole redeem team. So I'm just like, well, Kobe's an obvious call. Like, it's, it's Kobe. What you mean? Yeah, right. like, I think he just came off his MVP year, too. So, or the years. It was around the time it was MVP. No, nah, I was going to get into that, too. But he actually won MVP the next year after yeah. that. Like, that was, so, no, I'm sorry. He won the championship the next year after that. He won MVP like yeah, like a year ago or two years ago. So it's right around. I know it's right in the year he finally won MVP. But right. um, yeah, the whole Kobe and then was so interesting to see, especially me being the Kobe guy. That's my guy. And like, um, I, I don't know what the biggest thing I take away from just that whole storyline with him. Um, I, I, <laughs> I'll say this. I, as soon as I saw that jump, uh, when that it was him and Brian sitting on the couch and they was kind of talking and stuff, and they was talking about how Kobe was saying how LeBron's more goofy, he's gonna talk and stuff, his leadership is way more vocal. Kobe's, I don't say nothing, I just like laugh because I was like, and that sounds like me, bro. Like, <laughs> 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 like, I just had to put the work in, do what I gotta do, <laughs> go, go home. home. Like, all that looks up in the middle, it's, it's cool, but that ain't me, you feel me? So. And I immediately text my home where I was like, bro, that sounds just like me and you, bro. Like, he's more like LeBron. He's going to laugh and get everybody. He go, he's more of a team guy. Like, LeBron through and through, like, on the floor and off the floor. He's about team, about everybody, about the family, everybody coming together. And I'm more just like, bro, whatever you get the business done. Like, whatever it gets from A to Z, whether it's I'm dragging you, I'm kicking you off the boat, whether it's uh, nice, whether it's mean. Whatever, I'll, I'll go alone if I got to, bro. I'm just not gonna sit here and be patting you on the back and stuff, whatever. And it's just like, uh, but they work well together because, like, uh, we kind of talked about this before. Where it's like, you got the daddy on the team, you got the mom on the team, and it's like, daddy coming through whipping everybody, but and it's just like, he ain't no if ands, or buts. Mama come behind and be like, oh, that's okay, baby, you know, daddy, daddy just, you know, got this thing, whatever, you know what I mean? And like, that's kind of the, the, the dynamic that they had. And I'm not as, you know, uh, as demanding as a Kobe, but I do have some of that, like, just, you know, this way or no way type of mindset with stuff. And I'm learning to get better. I'm trying to be more of the 24 Kobe when, you know, he had Powell and Lamar Odom and D Fish. I'm trying to be more of that guy, you know. But I text him immediately. I'm like, bro, me and you just like Kobe and uh, Brian because. I don't be saying nothing, but I'm here for the work and I get keep it pushing. But I realize I need I need LeBron with me. You know, I need somebody who's gonna be more extroverted, you know, more talk to people. That's why me and you work so well, because I'm more Kobe, you're more like LeBron. You're gonna talk to people, you're gonna be, you know, a little more animated, goofy, joking and stuff. Not that I'm not, 
you know, joking and stuff. Not that I'm so serious, but you just You're the way more, more serious than counterpart. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you compare us, obviously I'm the serious guy, but I joke and laugh in my own way. That's just like, you know, like I'm more straight to the point. I'm more factual. I'm more, I'm more black and white. You, if you was more colorful and everything, so I'm like, I always need to be intentional having LeBron with me. So that's one of the funniest things I took away from that chunk. And it's just nice. like after that, you start to see how Kobe opened up, and he was just kind of more of like, uh, really become more of one of the guys on the team rather than just like Kobe in the USA team. It was like all of everybody under the USA team branch. So I think that was cool to see, and just how uh, he conformed to them, but they conformed to him too. Like you said, y'all went partying. All right, cool. I'm gonna catch y'all in the weight room, bro. Like everybody, like, wait, what is he for real? That's the funniest story out of the whole doc. The boys coming back from the club. <laughs> they just coming back from the club. Kobe downstairs <laughs> swing with workout clothes on. Yep. Like, Where you going? <laughs> going to the <weight> room. <laughs> I said, boy, I know I'd have been blown. <laughs> like the weight room. <laughs> and they said they yep. got on the elevator talking about what? Yep. <laughs> like did, did y'all saw that? Like y'all heard it? What? <laughs> They, they wow! I thought yeah. that was crazy. I can't lie, cause I I know I'd have been the same way. If I'm in a lock. If I mean I, we didn't got in the elevator, I would show up and be like, he just said weight room, right? <laughs> weight room? That what he said? That's yep. crazy. But that's so Kobe. That's the Kobe that we've heard so much about. Mm-hmm. And you know, I love Kobe stories. I love MJ stories. Just to like hear how them guys were as people and as players and teammates and stuff. That just like you know confirms it, and it's the fact that all of them got that story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, you got nine, ten guys that got that same story about Coke, about them coming back from the club. They talking about how lit the club was. It was so much fun. It was a great night. They come back, Kobe coming to the going down, coming to the weight room at mm-hmm. like five o'clock in the morning, and then but that rubbed off on those guys. And then they start doing stuff like that. They start getting, they said they all kind of conform to Kobe's schedule. And then the, another funny part of the show. Mellow. Dog on Mellow. <laughs> I'm talking about some, but I, I wasn't going to get up at four o'clock in the morning, bro. That, that's just. Night trip. You just too early, bro. You trip. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it, though, Mellow. Hey, Mellow, I feel it. I that's feel funny. it, though. No talking about talking about. They got up like four o'clock in the morning. They lifting at five. Eat breakfast, go to practice, you know, eat again, like getting yeah. on just a, a tight workout like schedule on a regiment. Yeah. And so that leads me to another thing that I wanted to get into. I actually saw this on Twitter, but I didn't realize they didn't really bring it up. I saw this on Twitter the other day, after like the day after I watched it, because I watched it the day it came out. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the next day I'm scrolling through Twitter, kind of just seeing what people saying about it. And uh, a guy says, um, the guy was like, they they didn't really, um, they was like, uh, they got to give Kobe his respect and, you know, uh, how he inspired those guys and what he did for them. Because the year after that, 2009, like, they was like, the, what, uh, they, they believe what, he, so he basically saying what Kobe did for those guys is underrated because he carried on past the Olympic team, like, it, it I was like just that. gonna say that, yeah. Yeah, and I had I was never gonna piece that together, but it, after that 2008 Olympic team, that season, that 2008-2009 season, was Braun first MVP. Chris Paul had a better year. D Wade had a better year after you know coming from his injury. He had a good year. Um, and Kobe won the championship that next year. And so, it just was one of them things. Like man. Like, we may never really, really know, but you can kind of see, like, what Kobe did for them guys meant something. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, like, what they did for him meant something. Also, cause like 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 you said, like we mentioned earlier, it's like Kobe not opening up the teammates, not really letting nobody in, just kind of doing his own thing, being standoffish, is probably in some ways a hindrance to his team. Like, their best mm-hmm. player, their leader, they feel like he disconnected from them. He don't have no yeah. friends. And so I feel like that probably helped him in a lot of ways, like probably especially with a guy like Pau Gasol and those guys, like bringing them along, Ron Artest. Like he got these personalities on his team, and they probably feel like 
Like Kobe ain't a part of them. It's just Kobe mm-hmm. and then the rest of us. And yeah. so the year after that, you know, they win a championship. I feel like that's that can't be underrated either. Mm-hmm. And so what those guys did for each other, what Kobe did for them, what they did for Kobe, and like how they how their career shook out from that point on, I feel like it can't be underrated. So I thought that was like a real cool thing that I would have never thought about. Like, man. Olympic basketball only happens every four years, but this was one of the years that was like that may have changed the trajectory of a lot of guys' career. And like we'll never know, obviously, but it yeah. can be it can be said that like Kobe like like helped put LeBron into that that space, like projected LeBron into what it would take to, for him to become an MVP, help project CP3. Because CP3 was young at this point, I want to say. He was only, like, in his third or fourth year in the league, something like that. Because he didn't get drafted with Bron in them. But um, he he was still young in the league. And, like, Kobe, like, all the guys got all this respect for Kobe. So, like, you just never know what kind of real impact Kobe had on those guys. And, you know, the impact the team as a whole had on Kobe in his career, because like you said, them, them guys talking about, like, you know, what kind of guy that, that the stigma around him, and they helped remove that stigma. And so I just think all of that, man, is, man, warms my heart. <laughs> warms my heart to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I was literally thinking about that as we were talking. Um, but I'm going to go even one level deeper than that of how Kobe impacted not just Olympic, but basketball, like the way the pro game, the pro game is right now, right? Mm. So, uh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, ooh, that water hitting, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but nah. So, like, you, like we talked about the, co- the story of Kobe working out, you know, four a.m. Right? Yep. Players were working out and stuff, so it wasn't abnormal to be working out. But of course. His psychotic basketball mind was like, I'm going to work out 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6, whatever the time was at that time, you know. And they were just like, hold on, bro. You working out now? All right, cool. So starting with Kobe, I wish I could have like a diagram. Of, starting with Kobe working out here. That trickled down to D-Wade, Brun, the next two. Like, it's like it was Kobe, Brun, and D-Wade as the guy. Like, it was the top three. I think D-Wade said, like, it was the debate of who's the best guy in the league between those three. It was no if, ands, or buts. Like, mm. it's one of them three, you know. And it trickled down from those three to, you know, CP, Melo, so on and so forth of, you know, the best guys working out, having that work ethic. And so, first off, Kobe made it more of a thing to be in the weight room. Like, it was already a thing, but he really made it a thing, thing for real, for real. To where now you see guys working out before a game, like literally hours before the game, after the game, like that really became a thing after Kobe. Like that that ripple effect became so big to where now it's like this man's been retired for how many years now? And he's, you know, passed a few years ago. Like, but that I don't know if that like you said, we can't a hundred percent contribute to him, but you gotta give some flower. Like it's a big bouquet. He deserves some of them flowers in that bouquet of you know the after effect of working out and stuff. Then like you more of what you were saying is like the like the whole Olympic effect really became more of a thing. I have to, me personally, I have to say after that 08 year, because the uh, the whole Olympic juicing of you know that that extra boost you get from being the Olympic team started to become a thing after 08, because you start seeing players every year from 08. Like you said, that's the year he won MVP. That's the year he won the championship. That's the year CP got better. Away got even better. Um, from 12, you start seeing players play after that. From 16, like every year at the Olympic team, you start seeing players, they game just jump up another level because you can't help but get better if, if number lines around you, bro. Like you're going to have to figure out something. So if you swim in the pool with sharks, you're going you're gonna to come out better when you start going back to these little dolphins. Like it's just like, bro, it's a whole different game over, over here now. Like So every day you got ones between uh, Melo, KD, and Kobe – what you mean like you jimmy butler paul george are going ahead going head to head the whole time like you got no option but to get better after that because it's either eat or get eaten so it's like the yeah. ripple effect of being around that level of talent like it's it's very hard to get that level of talent in one room besides all-star weekend but to still being it like you ain't even fully in killer mode 
but to tap in in killer mode all in it like the same span oh man you gotta trust but to get better so like kobe brought another level of intensity to that which he does with anything he's a part of it's like you're gonna be urgent and, and intense playing with kobe bryant so that ripple effect has happened because now you know the year after that you know the guys brought that same like they brought that kobe mentality mumble mentality to the 2012 team the 2012 team brought it to the 16 team. 16 brought that 20. So it's just ripple effect of Kobe jumping in and doing that thing, man. So I don't, I, we don't fully know. I don't think we're ever fully. I don't think anybody will fully know that you'd be like, yeah, Kobe did that. Like nobody really knows. But you have to give him some level of power to be like, dudes working out in the weight room became more of a thing because of Kobe. No, I forget that. I think it became a thing because of LeBron, but LeBron probably wouldn't have took it as serious if it wasn't for that experience in Kobe. So yeah, LeBron is the guy spending. A billion dollars over on his body a year whatever cool but his mindset might not have been like that as urgent if it wasn't for kobe you know what i mean and he probably wouldn't have the same mindset to do certain things if it wasn't for kobe so i just feel like we gotta like that really put things more into perspective which is like the ripple effect that kobe had on the league it's like it's more than just his style of play and like the, the work hard and you know to do all that stuff and the footwork and the details this man really had an impact on the game. Like this man, like oh, yeah. truly had like that level. I didn't think about it until the documentary came. I'm just like, that's crazy how that he really implemented those two things. Like, I don't know if we can fully credit him, but we can. We we're about to right here. We giving Kobe that, that respect for doing those two things, in my opinion. So that's just crazy to think about, bro. Like Kobe really made the weight room just as valuable as your skill game. And to be more conscious of that, and also ripple effect of being better at the Olympics. It's just like, it's just crazy, bro, to think about, man. But the Kobe effect is is bigger than what we even thought, man. So really? give him some more flowers to Kobe. And like, um, not to make the whole episode about Kobe, but um, <laughs> this guy still, I remember they talked about this before a game, not out, not, not long after he had passed or whatever. Um, they were talking about like his effect on the league or whatever. And a lot of the guys that he played with when they were young, because you know, his last few years in the league, the Lakers were bad. And you know, the young guys that were still there at that time, like um Julius Randle was still there. I think Julius Randle was there on the tail end of his career. Yeah. Um uh, I'm not sure about Brandon Ingram. No, I don't think Brandon Ingram was there. But a couple a couple of the I don't know. A couple of the young guys that was there in the tail end of his career. Uh, I remember they were talking about how he um, he made the thing to where whatever on away games when they fly wherever they land whatever time they landed he would go shoot or go work out whatever like it didn't matter what time they landed or what city they was in he would make sure that somebody on the team would get a gym for him like he might be in a high school gym he might be in a college gym whatever but somebody had to get make sure a gym was open and um, he would just go work out, like, fresh off the plane because they planned the next day. So he – whatever time he landed, that's what time he was going. And so now guys guys in the league still do that. Mm-hmm. And then those guys got, like, you know, inspired other guys. Like, they just started doing it because Kobe was doing it. They were like, oh, well, shoot, if Kobe doing it, you feel yeah. me? This must be a formula, you know, because, you know, mm-hmm. you, you need to do – you know, that's like a – that's something you need to be willing to do. You got to be a sponge to the guys around you, especially when you're around greatness like Kobe. And this, you know, this tail in this career, so they know him. They know what he did. You know, mm-hmm. they got all this respect for him. And they come in, it's like, oh, well, every time we land, Kobe going to work out. So, sure, it must be something to it. Like, he ain't doing it for nothing. And so they start doing it, and now they all on different teams. And now they're still doing it, and, like, guys are doing it because they are doing it. Mm-hmm. And I know they, I know for certain they said Julius Randle does that. Yep. But I can't really, yeah, I can't remember who all, like, what other guys may have been doing it or what that they mentioned. But they was like, they basically said that's like a, the Mamba effect. Like, mm-hmm. stuff he did inspired others. Like, same way they, he inspired people that, that's not, that he never played NBA basketball. You mm-hmm. know, like the Mamba mentality and the, you know, the work ethic, the, the, the things of that nature that he brought every night inspired others and like they still do it. So there's no doubt in my mind he inspired those guys. And 
help their careers inadvertently. Like, you know, who knows? Who, you know, I'm, I'm sure those guys would have still been who they are, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think Kobe definitely propelled them in the right direction. Like, this is something that I do that I know has brought like brought me success. And he might not have brought, came out and said it, but him doing it and him being who he is, you know, at that like in 2008, he didn't already had the three peat with Shaq. Mm-hmm. You know, and then Shaq gone, he get his own player. He got all the he got all the respect he need in the league. You know, everybody know about Kobe at this point in time. So he got all this respect. So he don't really have to say it with words, but his actions let people know, like, oh, he doing this every day. This must be like the secret. This must be something to him. What makes him mm-hmm. Kobe? And then they they just take that and they go on with it. Like, okay, if this is what he does, I'm gonna go with it. You know what I'm saying? I, I know this must bring him success. So mm-hmm. if I want to be successful, I'm with it. Yeah. And so, man, like I said, you gotta give that man his flowers. Why, you know, you know he, I hate that you know he ain't around to see it and to like, cause people talking about him now, like people saying it, mm-hmm. bringing up what he did for guys like LeBron, Wade, Melo. You know, Carlos Boozer, Chris Paul, like mm-hmm. they talking about what he did for them guys. And so yeah. it's just one of the things, man. Like it's great, man. It's cool to see. Yeah, that's one of the things that always bother me when uh seeing stuff about Kobe. I feel the same way about Nipsey too. It's just like you watch I watch interviews and stuff for them, or it's just you know, documented like this or whatever, and it's just like, man, I just can't to see what they do next. I'm just like, oh, oh wait, dang. Yeah, and it just hit me for me. I was like, "Dang, man! Like, dang!" It just, it just, it put me back in that place I was when I found out when I when I heard the news. I'm just like, "This can't be real, bro!" Like, man, I wonder what Kobe would say about, "Oh man, yeah." Man, I wonder what you know what I mean. Just like, dang, I just it just put me back in that place sometimes when I watched it. So hearing him speak again, it almost felt like he was part of document. I love the way they did it because it felt like he was part of documentary too. Even though we, obviously he wasn't, and so it, it was just you know uh, a bittersweet thing to see that man, and, and it's just um, you know I love that. The one thing I and I'm not, like I said, I'm trying to make this about Kobe, but the one thing I will say that gave me a lot of um, I guess peace about him passing is that he got his flowers. Like he, I'm pretty sure he was fully aware of that how much love the world has for him. You know what I mean, like. Of course, he never you never get all your flowers, but that's when a few people I feel like got at least most of his flowers before he died. You know what I mean? So that's when that kind of gave me peace about in his passing. Like, yo, we can really sit back and say, like, he felt all the love that we had for him before he was, you know, before it's left for him to get him. So that's one thing I will say about him that I can like smile about at least, you know. And the fact that his his wife doing fine, you know, girls doing fine and stuff is just like they smile and everything. So it's all really matters at this point, man. If they good, you know, we good. So um yeah, that's 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 it for Kobe, man. We we this ain't the Kobe documentary, man. But back to the redeem team, man. Um I'm I'm gonna give a, a semi hot take. I don't think this is really a hot take. I feel like a lot of older heads will agree with me here. Okay. Looking back at the roster, we're we gonna get to this one day too. Looking back at the roster, the Redeem team is overrated. <laughs> oh, overrated? It's overrated. It's, it's overrated, bro. Like you mean like the team, like the full like twelve man roster, the full twelve man roster, overrated. Okay, let's let's look at the roster. Let's, let's run the roster. Now. I hate I hate to do it so late, but let's run the roster down. Okay. Oh, okay. We good. So they're very top heavy. Let me find the roster real quick. I found it. All right. Uh, I got it. All right. That's that's twenty twelve, bro. I want oh eight. What are you doing? Why are, you, why are you doing this to me, Google? All right, cool. Oh, wait. All right, all right, all right. Okay, here's the roster. So you got Carlos Boozer, Jason Kidd, LeBron James, Darren Williams, Michael Red, D. Wade, Kobe, Dwight Howard, Chris Bosh, Chris Paul, Tayshaun Prince, Carmelo Anthony. 
Okay, looking at this roster, they're very top heavy. I, I believe the first five was Kid, Kobe, Braun, Melo, and Dwight. That's the first mm-hmm. five. Okay, you compare that to the '92 team, where I'm. Let me just let me just throw the roster out here for '92 team. Okay, I was thinking about this like this whole week. So, if you look at the '92 roster, everybody. Let's throw Chris Layton off there. Like that's just. Forget no, about he it. on there. He on there. Michael okay. Red on there. <laughs> keep no, keep okay, cool. Keep him on there. Keep him on there. Everybody else on that roster is at minimum top ten at their position all time, all time. Every like one through eleven, top ten at their position. Worst case is ten. If you want to go, you can nitpick and say top five. If you really want to, but nobody's throwing like David Robinson and Patrick Ewing top five centers out there. They're top ten. Like this, it's Shaq, Kareem, Will, whoever. Okay. Chris Mullen might be one of the other weaker players, but he's still like two guard, three, three. He's still top 10. You know, he's, he's in that discussion. I don't know how deep we go, but he's arguably top 10. Stockton, okay. he's a top five to 10 point guard. Some people throw him top three. Like who else are you really putting that discussion on the 08 team? Like Michael Red, love him. You're, you're, you're not top 10, bro. Like he's a great shooter. Love him. Boozer, you're a solid big during our time. Uh, Tayshawn Prince, love you too, my boy. Like I, I respect your game. Love you too. You're you're not on that category. Bro. I, I believe that to that too. So when we talk about who would win, ninety two versus 08, stop it. Like I used to be kind of fight it, but I'm let's stop it, bro. Let's stop it. They're top okay. heavy. The 08 team is very top heavy because you got the next two greatest shooting guards in the game on the same team. You had the third best shooting guard all time coming off the bench. Like, come on, bro. That's your six man. Leading score, like six man. Cool. Now, granted, and I, I will go throw you one more caveat. Larry Bird and Magic were not the Magic and Bird that we know and love to, to adore. Ready to say that. But Magic was still playing pretty decent. Okay. So here's the thing. If you throw next five in, the second five, you take the starting five out for both teams. The second five, 92 is whooping always, but. Like they kicking him out the gym. I don't even know who the second five was, bro. But I will guarantee you that oh, the 08 team is getting smacked. Like, I love D Wade, but your next five is going to be CP, young CP3. I ain't talking about all time CP3, young CP3, D Wade, um, probably Prince, Boozer, and let's throw D Will on there, you know, for the heck of it. Because I don't, I don't really know. But. Maybe Michael Red. Like, that's your next five? Really? You going against Patrick Ewing or David Robson at the five. Uh, I don't remember if Chuck was starting or not, but now when Chuck, uh, he was starting. Um, who was the other four? Was it, it Carl was, Malone? Uh, yeah, Carl Malone. So Carl Malone coming off the bench too. I think the spot uh, line though was um was Magic, Jordan, Pippen, mm-hmm. uh, Charles. Barkley. Yeah, and then I think David Robinson. Let me so that put – I got the team in front of me, but, uh, you know, it don't say starters or nothing like that. But, um, yeah, because Charles Barkley led the team in scoring, so I know he started. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was like Chuck, Jordan. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. So I think starting five was Magic, Jordan, Pip. Uh, Charles Barkley and David Robson. That's more than likely starting five. So your next five coming off the bench is going to be John Stockton. Uh, let's throw Clyde at the two. Let's throw Bird at the three. No, I'll take Bird off. Let's throw Chris Mullen at the three. Carl Malone at the four. And Patrick Ewing at the five. So you got John Stockton, Clyde Drexler, Chris Mullen, uh, Carl Malone and Patrick Ewing as your next five. John Stockton talking about you arguably top three point guard. Drexler probably the second best shooting guard of that era between him and Reggie Miller, if you want to debate that. Uh, who would I say? Chris Mullen, one of the deadliest snipers of all time, arguably top 10 small forward. That can be a debate. I'm not trying to get into that right now. Carl Malone, the second all time leading score. Well, he was, you know, but whatever. LeBron took that. And then Patrick Ewing, 
who is the top 10, a top 10 center all time. Like, come on, bro. Like, they're smacking that next team to sleep. Like, it's, it's nasty how bad that beatdown would be. Like, <laughs> so I just, I, I love them. I don't even know that they're the second best Olympic team. I think the 96 team might be better than them. I don't know. I look at the 96 team. I have to look back at it. But that's just kind of my 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 hot take. There might need to be a whole other episode. But that's just like one thought I had after that. I'm just like, I'm looking at the rest of that roster. I'm like, they're top heavy. First five, it'll be a good fight. The first five, I'll give you that. Oh, yeah. That's that bench is where it starts getting if they get if the if the if you could minimize the roster to go like eight deep, then you can start having a good conversation, a good fight for who could win. But you got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You take off two of the next couple of guys, you take off Bird and Chris Leitner on that 92 team, they still smacking up teams. So that's just kind of my hot. I feel like the OA team okay. is a little mm. okay. But if you take off Bird and Leitner for mm-hmm. 20, 2008, take off Prince and Red, Michael Red, Tayshawn Prince. You still got Darren Williams, CP3, uh, Wade, Bosch, and Boos are coming off the bench. But you got young CP3 and young D Will. It's not. It's not. It's not point guard still. That's young CP. I feel like he was still like he's still getting off. Like at that point in time, he's still getting off. Like it ain't. It ain't the know. same, bro. It's still young CP. I feel it though. I feel that. And I'm but, a CP guy, so I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm definitely not biased by saying this, but it's young. That was like CP's. I think he drafted in 05, I think. So that's his third so year in the league. Year league. He was he was nasty. Don't get me wrong. He was. I remember that year. He almost cooked the Spurs by himself. I that was like oh nine. I remember that vividly. He was cooking them boys. He took them to game seven. I remember young CP. But you're not getting off against that team, bro. Like I feel it though. I de- I can't lie. I do think the dream team is definitely better than this team. But since we're talking about it, I know this ain't the episode. But uh, since we're talking about it. If I'm finna pick a, a a team, an Olympic team to roll with, give me 2012. <laughs> 2012. No. Nah, hey, this, we finna get into some. <laughs> 2012. Okay. Let me read you the roster for 2012. You got Melo, Kobe. So Melo and Melo Kobe still prime. Melo, Kobe, Tyson Chandler, Anthony Davis, young Anthony Davis, granted, young Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. He was drafted in like 2010, something like that. So young Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, mm-hmm. James Horn, mm-hmm. Andre Iguodala, mm-hmm. Bron, mm-hmm. Kevin Love, Chris Paul. Four years older, Chris Paul. So now you know this Chris Paul. Like this, this is CP3 and Russell Westbrook and Darren Williams. Mm-hmm. Give me that team over any team, any Olympic team in history. I can't lie. I like them over the dream team. Just being real. Just being real. Because it's 2012. So 2012, 2013, no, 2011, 2012 was the year OKC had just went to the finals and they lost mm-hmm. to the Heat. Mm-hmm. So that lets you know KD, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook was arriving. KD had arrived. Russ was, you know, on his way. And James Harden was still, you know, James Harden was coming into his own. You know, he mm-hmm. wasn't James Harden yet, but he was mm-hmm. coming into his own. This Miami Heat LeBron, so, mm-hmm. you know, you know, it's debatable what version of LeBron is the best LeBron. But this Miami Heat LeBron, mm-hmm. Miami Heat championship winning D-Wade. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, Wade ain't on the team. I'm sorry, I'm still throwing Wade on there. Wade ain't on the team. But you still got Kobe, who had just won mm-hmm. the championship in 2010, went again, and, and then, like, I mean, now, yeah, won the championship in 2010. So you still, still prime Kobe. Then you got Tyson Chandler, solid big. Like, Tyson Chandler, Patrick Ewing, you feel me? They go head up. Young Anthony Davis. I will give you young Anthony Davis. This ain't prime AD yet. So mm-hmm. young Anthony Davis. You still got prime Iggy. Iggy still getting off. He still got that athleticism. Mm-hmm. Then, you, then you got Kevin Love, who was going crazy in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. The best power forward in the league at the time. And then, you know, I said Russell Westbrook. And then Darren Williams was still good at the time. He was on the, the, the backdrop, but he was still good. So I like them boys. And like, I might be a little biased, obviously, because this is my generation or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. these are our guys. But give me them. Cause it's like I got, 
I got CP3 for Magic, Magic Old, and you know, at this point, so he ain't prime Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. But I got CP3. Obviously, CP3 probably ain't guarding Magic because he's too small. But I got CP3 and Magic here, the old Magic. I got Kobe and Jordan. You know, you mm-hmm. know how that go. Then I got Braun and um Pip. I like mm-hmm. you feel me. I like that matchup. Then I got um I think Mello. Kevin Love started. No, yeah, Melo no, started. Yeah, Mello. Mello and Chuck. I, I like that. You know, Melo might have to scrap a little bit, but that's all right. And then you got Tyson Chandler and uh, David Robinson. Mm-hmm. Then you got coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. This this way this way gonna get ugly. You feel me? So coming <laughs> off the bench, John Stockton versus uh, they probably uh, went. I think Russell Westbrook got more. I think Russell Westbrook played more than Darren Williams at, at that point in time. Because Russell, I mean, either one. John Stockton, Darren Williams slash Russell Westbrook. Clyde Drexler, James Harden. Young James Harden. We'll give you young James Harden. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did we say for the dream Katie. team? The, yeah, KD and, you know, Bird. Chris Mullin. Chris Mullin. KD, you know, I, I like, hey, come on, that's a good matchup. K Love and Young AD versus um, Patrick Ewing and um, who's the Malone? Man? Malone, Patrick Ewing and Malone. Mm-hmm. I think this, this is the matchup for real. This is the team we need to be talking about going ahead of. Like, no. No? <laughs> you kept saying Young. This is Young KD. The only the only no, thing KD had just came off the finals though. He is a like he is KD, he Kevin Durant. He it, it ain't nobody but young. I said young AD and young James Hart. That's the only so KD was in year five around that time. Because he got drafted mm-hmm. in 07, 08. So I was about year four or five, something around there. That's young. Yeah. That's still young for him. He just came off a finals run though. So he clearly one of the best players. He's still young. That what he what he accomplished did not negate how young he is in the league. Okay, I get that. He's still young, like that. He, I think he was first, then Westbrook, and then Harden. That's the order of what OKC drafted. So the boys are still young. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they weren't good. I'm not saying they didn't accomplish whatever they accomplished. They're still young, relatively young to the league. So Chris Paul grew up. That was around point guard era. I give you that. I was around oh. D. Will come around cooking with the the uh triple cross like crazy. I give you that. Now KD still was cooking. Now he he was he was coming into the Ranchula that era. He was cooking. That was around when he was peaking social, uh the social standard wise of everybody loved KD. That was around that time because I remember in high school everybody had the KD sevens and you were crazy. We didn't have them like that. That was around that era for me. So I I'm aware of KD's you know. Around that time, is it a conversation? For sure, it's a conversation. It's something to talk about. But if you want to talk game on game, then of course you're going to take Young Westbrook over John Stockton. You feel me? Like some of this stuff is obvious because it's like the game. You're talking about 20 years later. No nah, yeah. game. You know what I mean? It's like it's obviously we're talking about that. But now let's let's peel back one layer of like. Who these guys were, so that's what I'm saying. Young KD, young Westbrook. This ain't, this ain't triple double Westbrook. This is young Westbrook who's still wild, kind of crazy. He's just super athletic. He don't know how to play basketball like NBA basketball yet, not for real, for real. And it's young James Harden before he was MVP, forty points a game in his sleep, step back like this. This before we just knew he was a really good player. That's that's all we really knew for real, for real. He could score off the bench like he was. You know what I mean? Like that's nasty three headed month they had down there. A young Kevin Love, because he was he was drafted oh seven or eight around that time too. So almost it's 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 a split between the OG vets of the Chris Pauls, Kobe's, Brian and them, and the young guys being groomed in with the KDs, uh Harden, Westbrook. AD was a rookie, so throw him out. He's definitely not in that discussion. Like just stop. You you like the Christian Lightning of this group with more respect. So that's kind of what he was. So no disrespect, but you know, this you're not in this conversation yet. So, um, I just feel like the second team still smacks them, bro. Like, if you're talking about one on one, then of course the 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 twelve team wins. Like that's just you getting smacked. But once again, 
if you want to go man to man with that second team, I love Iggy. Love him. Man to man, who who is he sticking with? Like he locking up Clyde? That's a good matchup now, but is he locking up Clyde? I, I like Iggy on Clyde. Uh, I like Iggy. That's a that's like, a really good matchup. That's a really defensive good wise. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good matchup. Now flip it. I don't. I think that gets kind of ugly on both sides. I'm gonna be real with you. Like I, I don't know how Clyde defense was, and Iggy's offense was. You know, he wasn't bad. He, he was a bucket. He was a. He could score. I don't. He won the bucket. He could score. He, he, he can get his. <laughs> he can get his. But I don't know how good that matchup is on the other end. So Clyde offense versus Iggy's defense. If you want to talk about how the game has changed, has ended. I, of course, I get a nod to the newer generation, but it's still you're talking about guys who are top 10 at their position at the time. Like these are all prime or close to prime guys. He's talking about the all time greats, the top 10 in each position in their prime. This ain't just like a great player talking about in their prime. That's no, that's what makes them so great. That's what makes them the greatest team to touch whatever. Like I'm talking about football, basketball, whatever. The greatest team to be assembled, period. Because you're talking about every guy in their prime minus Bird and Magic. And who was still – who could, if, if Bird back wasn't messing him up, we still could have did some business. Magic was still doing his thing, you know. So even without those two guys, you're talking about prime Michael Jordan, prime Pippen, prime Barkley, prime Malone, prime Stockton. Like I ain't even – I don't even want to be one of the people who just gas up the old head stuff. But I'm just like prime everybody. But you talking about these guys and they prime too. The they 2011 prime. These are young KD, guys. KD, first team all NBA. I'm looking at it right now. KD, that mm-hmm. 2012, first team all NBA. LeBron, first team all NBA. Kobe, first team all NBA. Chris Paul, first team all NBA. Kevin mm-hmm. Love, second team all NBA. Russell Westbrook, second team all NBA. Melo's third team all NBA. Tyson Chandler, third team all NBA. So all them dudes on that team, minus AD and mm-hmm. minus um. Minus AD, obviously we knew my AD, and then James Harden was sick. Was uh, well, yeah, James Harden was six man of the year. Mm-hmm. So like D boys, that's what I'm trying to say. Like D boys was coming. James Harden ain't in his prime obviously because he ain't like NBA All Star superstar James Harden that he will become. Mm-hmm. But he ain't gotta be. He's six man of the year. He mm-hmm. coming off the bench for them. So you talking about six man of the year, James Harden? You talking about everybody, just about the whole star line of all NBA plus the whole bench for all NBA. LeBron the best small forward in the time. Kobe best shooting guard at the time. CP the best point guard at the time. K Love the best power forward at the time. Tyson Chandler a solid big third team all NBA. Russell Westbrook uh, coming off the bench. He's second team all NBA. I agree. I get it. He ain't missed a triple double yet, but he coming off the bench. James Harden six man of the year. He coming off the bench like. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about? Like, I feel like the Vatos is there. Magic, you know, Bird, you know, that 1992 with Bird last year in the league. Well, that mm-hmm. next year was his last year in the league. He retired right after that. So, you know, it, it was over for Bird. So, we're we not just going to throw our names. You feel me? Bird was out of the. <laughs> no, I'm was... saying, I'm, I said that. Like, the Bird won Bird, but whatever. Don't Magic even was... throw him off of there. Yeah, but Magic, I give you Magic. He still was doing his thing. Of course, Mike. Of course, Pip. Mm-hmm. But Mike, Mike and Kobe. It, hey, I get you know, we, we put Mike over Kobe, but Mike and Kobe, come on. That's they cancel team. each other out. So it's kind of what I'm saying. They cancel each other out. Yeah. Pip and LeBron. I like LeBron. I get Pip a great defender and all that. But Pip and LeBron, that LeBron taking that one. CP3 yep. at that point in time, and Magic at his point in time, I'm probably taking CP3. And then that's Kyle Ford. Yeah, that's the, you know, it's debatable. But, you know, yep. and then Caleb and – Charles Barkley. Like, they ain't stopping I, each other, so. <laughs> yeah, they not stopping each other. It's like, shoot, <laughs> you got to you get what you get. And then um, Tyson Chandler and um, David Robinson. So I think David Robinson take that one, obviously. And then off the bench, you talking about KD, Russell Westbrook, James Horn, all teammates. They all play together. Mm-hmm. And um, then you still got Iggy. You still got um, – and you still got uh, Darren Williams. I just I think that's straight. I think the matchup's there. Give me I them boys. Give me them boys in the seven game series. Let me say that. Give me them in the seven game series. 
I just I just can't get over them being in their prime. It's like the if if you're talking about right now, right right now, all these guys like career wise right now, hands down, 2012 is smacking through 08, 0, uh, from you said 12, so they smacking through 2020, uh, 16, uh, 8, 4, 2000, 96, 92. They smack it through everybody because these are like all time, all time. Like, just run, like, just think about the names now. Ke- Kevin Durant and LeBron James, two mega stars. I don't even call them superstars, just mega stars. Kobe Bryant is in that category too. Like, this is just ridiculous. Like, all time, think about them. Westbrook yeah. is a top 10 point. Oh, I don't care what people say. He's top 10 point guard. Like, put some respect on the man. Hey, triple double. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Like, put some respect on his name. D. Will, when healthy, he was cooking. That boy was in his bag like stupid. Iggy was a at his best. He would have been a Scotty Pippen without the scoring. That's what I feel like at his at his prime, at his best of who he was. Uh, Kevin Love is top twenty power forward all time. We could we could have a debate top fifteen. We could really learn that down of where he is, but just comfortably saying top twenty all time power forward. We talked about how much he he's stupid. He was a Walking 30 and 20 a game around that time. So this Kevin Love was stupid. James Harden, one of the best scorers all time. Like he ridiculous. Like he's in his back. Chris Paul, point guard. I think I I got him top five point guards um all time. Anthony Davis, one of the unicorns of our generation. Ridiculous. Like he's he's it's crazy what he can do when healthy. And then Carmelo Anthony, a top five scorer all time. You know, like it's this man is is a bucket. He, he's a what we call him a a, a phone booth scorer. He only none but the, but that much room to go score. Like you a bucket, bro. Like he he only even but none but a jab and and a pump fake to get you moving, bro. Like he's a bucket. So all time, oh they smacking through everybody. Like forget the ninety two, forget oh eight. They run. Michael Red is not handling. Tayshon Prince ain't handling none of that. Bulls ain't handling none of that. Like go to sleep because that's that's all you getting, bro. Like you just. No, stop it. So all time, yes, like on paper, like right now, the 12 teams probably all time. I ain't even look at the 16 roster. I don't think I need to. I ain't look at the 2020 roster. I don't think I need to. You're talking about all time, all time of all time players right now. And I think the 16 had Clay and Steph, so that's you know, I might, I might, okay, I might need to think about that. Not think about that. no, we don't need to think about. It. <laughs> Steph, oh, now, I, now I got to pull them up, bro. I, was Although, to end I, it, I got bro. you, I got you, I got you. You said 2016. So that's 2004, 08, 12. 2016. Uh, so Jimmy still, Butler, KD, DeAndre Jordan, Kyle Lowry, Harrison Barnes, uh, DeMar DeRozan, Kyrie, Clay, Boogie, Paul George, Draymond Mello. No, nah, never mind. 2012. Yeah, I, I'm going to say you don't got to look at it. Then 2020. You know the 2020. Team ain't talking about nothing for real. They won, but like all time wise, nah, they ain't talking about nah. that. Bam out of bio, D book, KD, Jeremy Grant, Draymond, Drew Holiday, Keldon Johnson, Zach Levine, <laughs> Dame Lillard, JaVale McGee, Chris Middleton, Jason Taylor. Nah. So, you know, great players now, but we can talk about the all time stuff. You know, you got KD, you got Dame. No, them the only top 75 players. Yeah, that's how we need to be thinking about it. Let's think about it in terms of top seventy-five. Everybody on the ninety-two dream team was top seventy-five, minus Christian Leitner. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody else was top seventy-five. So, if we're looking at twenty twelve, Melo top seventy-five, Kobe top seventy-five, Tyson Chandler was not. AD is, KD is, James Harden is, Iggy is not, Brian is. I don't remember K Love was or not. I don't think he so. Might, I, don't, I don't think he was. Chris Paul is. Russell Westbrook is. I don't think Darren Williams was. No, heck no. No, no. Nah. I don't say heck no, but no, he didn't play <laughs> enough to like our name. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. So you're talking about eight guys that's definitely top 75 versus 10 guys that's definitely top, top 75. Ain't no other teams got that. Mm-hmm. None. Like, even 2008, Boozer wasn't, Bosch wasn't, Dwight wasn't. He should have been. Should've I will been. throw that in there. Dwight I, definitely should have been since, top since we said that, episode. Since we said that, I personally believe Anthony Davis should not have been on the NBA 7. We, we, we didn't make an episode about that, but we should have. 
I don't believe Anthony Davis earned Still the top can. 75. Cool, we can do that next time. So I don't believe Anthony <laughs> Davis should have earned a 75. I don't care. Y'all can like I love 80, but I don't think he earned it. Since we on there too, I don't know if Dame should have been on that. And y'all know I love Dame. Oh, I'm glad you said it because I was getting ready to. <laughs> Take both of them said. off. Take both of them off, put Melo on, put Dwight on, put not, not Melo, uh T Mac on, Vince Carter. Mello's it's in too many names. And that's why I said I mean I mixed it up. I put T Mac on, yeah. put Vince Carter on. Uh and I love Dame, but I don't One know. Boys. Like, come on now. He ain't did enough. Not enough, man. And that's that's my boy. I love him. I'm not trying to knock him. And I love him. But nah. So technically for me, take 80 off of that. Just me personally. But I I expect he got it. So, you know, keep on it. So cool. Nah, yeah. But definitely the white. The white three defensive players of the year. One championship. I think he had four. Nah, I think. I don't know. I think it was three. Oh, no. He should have had. He should have had four. He should have had four. That's my opinion. (laughs) <laughs> but the white you talking about a guy with three defensive player of the years, it ain't too many people with three NBA trophies, not to mention yeah. three defensive players of the years. Like, so I don't know. I thought that was messed up. But yeah, anyway, if you look at 08, Booze are not top 75, Bosch not top 75, mm-hmm. Dwight not top 75. Like, we gonna count Dwight for, for our own personal state. <laughs> Boozer, Bosch, Kid was, Tayshawn Prince, I do not think was. Heck no. Michael Rea was not, and nope. Darren Williams was not. Nope. So, th- yeah, like, they, they not cutting it when you talk about all time. But then when you go to the next one, 2012, uh, you got Tyson Chandler, and you got Iggy and Caleb, and then Darren Williams again. Darren Williams was just hanging on to the Olympic team, but when I look at it, this man wanted to play for them Olympics. <laughs> He had to hang on to his best years, man. Because after that, I don't know what happened, but he went down here fast. Bad, bad, bad. But, um, yeah, man. I, I don't know. We might need to do a whole other episode with just that. But, like, you know, I, it, it's debatable, you know. But I love that 2012 team. That was one of the first ones. Like, I watched their games consistently. Like, I was mm-hmm. on their games. But, like, I watched some of the 2008 games. But I ain't watched all of them. But, 2012, I was on them. Them boys was tough. Oh, so, and another thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, because I'm finna flip to another hot topic thing. So you can go ahead and get yours out. Go ahead. I was finna go back to something I, I remember from the doc. So if you want to keep it on this, that's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, uh, write that down or something because I don't want you to forget. No, nah, so, I, I got it. <laughs> all right. I'll forget. So I got to write those down. So for me personally, man, I'm going to kind of contradict myself a little bit here. But that's, I'm perfectly fine. I can back it up too. <laughs> I personally believe that. So people, the part of the reason why people say the dream team is the best team all time, they were smacking teams by an average of like, let's just say forty. I think I don't remember yeah. exactly. They was whooping over. everybody. Yeah, they was whooping everybody. It was, it was easy. Like it was no. I think the closest margin of victory was like forty points. Something like it was something ridiculous. Like you just don't hear about that. Yeah. And I think the average after that was like. Everybody was like 30, something like that. I think Dream Team 2 had the cl- next closest, I mean, next margin of gap. They were the second highest behind the Dream Team. Mm-hmm. But since you want to be nitpicking stuff about how things were, I think that the world was better. Like, if you played the competition of what the 08 team went against versus what the 92 team went against, the 08 Olympic team, the international team, like the foreign teams, were way better than the 92 teams because oh, they yeah. actually had pro players there. So you can't use that margin of victory as part of the reason why the dream team was so much better than every other team because the competition is way much like 10 times better what they faced back then. Like we're facing Dirk Nowitzki, who was an all-time great player, top 75 player like we just mentioned, a top 10 power forward all time. Like he was a bucket. We are going against that. Argentina, ridiculous. Like they had some, some – Hey, I was gonna bring on Ricky Hernandez. That's what I was gonna get on to today, actually. But like, oh my god, was Hernandez giving these boys buckets? I was like, oh my goodness, bro. Like I was like, who is this? I was, I'm watching the dot, like, who is this? This man killing them. Bro. And I'm talking about I'm talking man. about real buckets, not off some like he got good plays ran for. I'm talking about buddy coming off one the on screen one. off the top. I'm like, who is this? Yep, bro. That, oh that's the funny God. thing. I, I forgot who said it. I think it might have been Katie, 
But then, like, man, that's the funny thing about going overseas, man. You got a dude who be like my backup, basically. And he go over there. He like the Jordan over there. I'm just like, he cooking, bro. I'm just like, like Patty Mills, for example. On 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 the NBA roster, he's a, he's a really good backup. Like a lot of teams would love to have. Solid point guard. But tell me why he was busting everybody the butt this past recent Olympic. Uh, I remember. Olympic, like busting, remember. Air, like he was the MVP of the league almost type of busting, like crazy. <laughs> so it's like the foreign the international game is is killing what happened in 92 and 96. Like the 90s, it's just two different worlds. So you're having NBA guys on these <laughs> rosters. You, so like I know your game. Technically, I don't even know your game because your game's totally different. Because you're not you're not backup Patty Mills. You're not this guy who just plays a role over here. Like you're totally different over there. You are like the 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 Chris Paul of your team. You're the KD of your team, and it's just it's a whole new scouting report right now. You got my scouting report because I'm pretty much the same guy, maybe watered down version, but I'm still can I can still go off on you anytime needed. So it's like you got my scouting report, but I don't have yours now because you're a totally different player. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we can't. Not the 2012 team, 2018, whoever moving forward. But like, oh, you're not winning by 30 like the dream team or 50 by the dream team was. Because we're playing better teams. It's not that we're that much worse. The competition is that much better. So, yeah, we might only win by 20. But our 20 is y'all 60. So, yeah, y'all won by 50. But we're even outdoing what you guys did before because we're going against our teammates and our counterparts. These are pro guys, too. So I was thinking about that, too, when they said – uh they only beat Argentina, whoever it was, or Spain. Like, Spain was stupid. But they had, like, six pro guys on the team. The Gasol they brothers. Kyle and Mark Gasol, yeah. They had both. Uh, they had Ricky Rubio. They had uh, uh, Fernandez on their team. I think Rudy Fernandez. They had uh, Rudy Fernandez. Uh, Jose Calderon. Like, they had they have pro players on their team, bro. Like, what are we talking about? And these are starters, too. So, like, so I just feel like that, that's an issue for me when we talk about, all oh, the dream team smacking everybody about 40. I only win about 20. But ours is so much better competition in there. So that's just that's my see my hot take. I just feel like people. No, nah, but the thing, yeah, the thing about it was the dream team introduced basketball to the world to a lot of places. Because mm-hmm. you know, like they said, when they when they went over there, everybody like in love with Michael Jordan. They even been Michael Jordan, Michael, Michael, Mike. You yeah. know, and, and like they finally get to see basketball on the highest level with their own eyes. Cause you know, it ain't like they show NBA games in every country. The Olympics showed everywhere. Yep. And so this is the world's kind of introduction to the best level of basketball. And so that propelled the world into like playing better, playing better, like putting putting, you know, better basketball teams together. And so people don't realize that like the world was not into basketball. America invented basketball. Basketball was invented in America and mm-hmm. it became a global sport. But it's not the same, and like the, the international game is so much more different, and not even just international basketball. So, like my coach didn't even said this. He was like, "Oh, uh, the opportunities y'all had to play basketball overseas way different than what I had when I was coming up." Because you know, by the time mm-hmm. my coach graduated in college and like finishing his basketball career, let me see, he fifty five, I want to say. So that means he was getting out of it. So he was twenty two about 23 years ago, so like 98-ish is when he was probably coming out of college. Hmm. And so um, that ain't even like dream team era yet. Like, I mean, that's past the dream team by a few years. But he was like, well, back when he played, like going overseas, look, you might have like one American guy on every team. Like they mm-hmm. wasn't like taking Americans left and right. You know what I'm saying? They had to take the best American they could get. Because they was only gonna get like one or two guys, but now y'all got it where like an overseas team might take four or five guys, and you know like just to get themselves the best chance to win, there's way more opportunity, and there's more countries playing basketball. Mm-hmm. So of course the talent pool is bigger. Like it's just way more talent out there. Like I remember Charles Barkley was talking about. I think in the '96 Olympics they played against Dirk Nowitzki before he came into the league, and he was really? killing them. Yeah. You know, of course, Dirk is Dirk. Like, we know who Dirk is now. But this young Dirk, before he in the mm-hmm. league, and he was like, the next year or two years later, he got drafted. Mm-hmm. So think about that. Dirk killing them before he even in the league. He ain't even yep. NBA yet. He killing Charles Barkley and them. And, you know, obviously they still won, but Dirk killing them. Now think mm-hmm. about a team with a bunch of NBA-level talent. 
playing the way that they play. Because obviously, you know, that was like the main theme is like how well the, uh, the other teams play together because they've been playing together. Mm-hmm. And we ain't throwing players together, making them play together. They yep. got players, they, they they talking about how like they like brothers. They've been together since they was teenagers, this and this and that. And so that's why they play so well together. So you got that plus NBA level talent all on the same team. And you out here talking about, yeah, this kid named Dirk the, the Whiskey. He ain't call him the Whiskey. <laughs> this kid named Dirk the Whiskey played for the German team, was killing us. And we going up to him like, shoot, man, you might well, you might you need to be in the NBA. And the, like right. he was the next year or two years later. Yep. So just like, nah, yeah, you can you can hang that up talking to me. Like, oh, the dream team was blowing people out by 40 every night. Yeah, they should have been. Them boys yep. don't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when we get to playing soccer, we're going to see who the real dream team is. <laughs> <laughs> the boy wasn't picking up no basketball in the 90s. <laughs> oh, don't bring up, don't bring up uh, American soccer, bro. We we getting smacked. Like, uh, nah, uh, come oh, on, my goodness, bro. We I bet smacked. they were saying that, too. Wait till we play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all boys can pull up to the soccer game in a week. <laughs> for the Olympics, and we gonna see who doing all the talking in when we get yeah. we beat y'all eight to zero, <laughs> and that's you that's know? terrible. That's, the that's eight to zero in soccer might have well be a fifty ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, man, nah, you, it's not you can't compare what they did because you know the you know the same way we talk about the game is different, the talent was different, and we talk mm-hmm. about that all the time, but. You just can't compare like how how bad they was doing people versus what's going on now. Like, so like you said, that us beating them by twenty is the equivalent of y'all forty forty ball fifty balls. So, yep. nah, I ain't going for that. But yes, so Hernandez, your turn, bro. <laughs> but Rudy Hernandez is what I was going to get into. I was like, boy, what is happening? And it, this man getting buckets on Kobe, D Wade, like the defenders now, mm-hmm. giving them buckets, tough buckets too. Like the passes they were making, I was like, D boys hooping. I don't care what nobody say. If you watch the doc now, you know it. D yep. boys hooping. I ain't seen not one clip of a great pass or great bucket from any of the team, the dream team play. And I didn't watch the uh, a hardwood classic of them playing before. I ain't watched the whole whole thing, but you know what I'm saying? I done seen them play. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't seen none of that. D boy was getting off. I was like, yo, yo, like, <laughs> D boy is open. I'm talking yeah. about twin cross, get to the lane, hot still, pad behind my back, and the big right there from the dunk it. I was like, what? <laughs> like, you could tell they've been together for some years. Like, you don't have chemistry like that without playing for some years. Like, you could be as smart a basketball player as you want to be, hitting a no-look pass after you just did a hard move mm-hmm. and it goes straight to him. That's chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what nobody said. I, w- I do want to have one, <laughs> one small comment on that, bro. It's going to be two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, nah, it's – I forgot. I think it might have been the same dude, but he had some the ugliest footwork move, bro. It was like he went – Twin cross, twin cross, but you know how like you like the James Harden twin cross, right? Yeah. And you know how like a kid do it, and it's like they hopping, and it's like yeah. I wish I could put the clip up here, but like it's like twin, and he hop back to do the cross, and it's twin yeah. again, and hop back to do the cross, and it's staying like the same spot. I was like, you know, that's my old school basketball because nowadays mm-hmm. that's getting ate up, bro. Like you're not doing that NBA now, bro. I'm like, pressing that hook in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, dog. <laughs> That's, that's my little comment, bro. That's it. But, like, I saw that thing. I was like, and you're cooking us? Okay. We're tripping, like. <laughs> oh, okay. That was okay. Oh, <laughs> no disrespect, but I, 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 I try to show you, like, the time frame when it was, bro. Like, and you see it, you'll be like, come on, Kobe, D-Wade, come on now, bro. Like, somebody got to stop this, bro. That's, that's, that's the move. This ain't no AI cross. Like, I got to, I'm going to try to find it again and show it. I'm going to send it to you, bro. That jump was like, it was embarrassing. As a hooper, you know, it's like, you he cooking us? You cooking? What? That little twin cross? Oh, okay. All right. So, Kobe, sit down, bro. You, you lost. <laughs> you, you, your head ain't in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you lost focus, bro. Like, go home. Like, try it again, man. Oh, my God. That's funny. I ain't thinking about that. But some of their moves was looking a little basic. But I'm about to see exactly what you're talking about. But I'm going to watch again and try to find this in to you, bro. That jump was like, I, I felt embarrassed for them, bro. I'm like, mm-mm. 
ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it at all. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh, but man. man, it's been a good one, dog. Is there anything else we want to throw in on the redeem team? Only the redeem team. <laughs> <laughs> um no, nah, I th- I had something else I wanted to say, but I, I forgot it, but it's too late now. So we we we, we gonna be three episodes in now, so we're done. <laughs> Oh, that's oh funny. man, but no, nah, no, nah, that does it for us, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the talk, man. Oh, uh, oh, nah, I know we enjoyed it. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. But um, be sure to like and subscribe, man. Uh, be sure to uh drop down in the comments. Let us know about any like little moments in the in the uh in the documentary that you that stood out to you. Something we might not have talked about. What's your favorite moment that happened? Whatever. And you know, you know, as a matter of fact, I also want to do this. Who is your favorite Olympic basketball player? Because like when it comes to the Olympics, everybody plays a little bit different. Because I know our people be talking about Melo like the best Olympic basketball player. Like, so, yeah, Olympic Melo's you know, up there. Olympic Melo, and then you know we saw Kobe with his big moments. Then this one, you know, you know this right here. That, that was cold, by the way. That was cold, yeah. This right here, cold. <laughs> but anyway, the, who was your favorite player during the Olympics? Like not just your favorite player, but during the Olympics, who was the like the guy that was like your like you want to see? So yeah, I'll leave that down in the comments, man. But um, yeah, that does it for us for another episode of the B Ball Jones podcast, man. Be sure to follow Brian on all social medias at B Ball Jones. That's B E Ball Jones on all so on all platforms. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Nelly H thirty four at Nelson.Haskin on IG and you can find me at my name on Facebook so uh, be sure to go follow us up over there we'd like to keep the conversation going also follow the podcast on TikTok if you're on YouTube you see it going across the screen right now uh, I'm going to <laughs> be sure to go follow us on TikTok man we got a couple videos up over there already so y'all go check those out uh, but yeah man that does it for us man hopefully y'all enjoyed it be sure to like and subscribe be sure to tune in next week for another great episode. It might be another talk, might be a debate, might be a little uh, a little interview again. You know, you never know until you show up. So um, be sure to check us out next week. But without further ado, man, we out. <laughs>